What is going on guys? This is Jake at That Fit Friend and today we are going to be reviewing the Hylite Circuit 2 Echo. Now I have filmed a review on the Hylite Circuit 2. I'm going to link that up there so if you want to jump to that, check that out and then maybe come back to this video, feel free to do so. But three pros that I like about this model is number one, the versatility is pretty solid across the board. So if you want a shoe for casual lifting, some CrossFit here and there, and then also HIIT workouts and classes, I feel like the Echo is a pretty good model. I think this is actually a better shoe compared to the Hylite Circuit 2, and I'll talk about why I think that later on. But as a whole, this model has been a really good kind of all-in-one style of shoe. Plus, with the shoe, you get two different insoles. You get this insole here that has a 4mm heel to toe drop, and then you get another insole that has an 8mm heel to toe drop. So if you want to change those out based on your activities because you like different drops, you can do so in this model. The second pro of this shoe is that I like the Vibram outsole and the midsole construction. Now, I do think that the insole could have a layer here to prolong its durability, but as a whole, the shoe grips really well. And I think if you're gonna be using these primarily for classes and gym sessions and not necessarily taking them outdoors where asphalt can tear up this exposed midsole, the outsole and midsole should work really well for you and provide a nice layer of versatility and grip across the board. So I do like that about this shoe. I do wish we had rubber here on the lateral midfoot, but again, if you're using these indoors, I don't think you'll have an issue with durability in this model. The third pro with this shoe is that as a whole, it is pretty lightweight and it breathes really well. So it never feels like a burden to wear. And with the toe box construction and with the reworked boot construction, I like how this model has kind of like leveled up compared to the Hylite Circuit 2. And if you like having training shoes that are lightweight and breathable, this is a good model to look into. As a whole, I do think Hylite made some curated construction changes to this model that makes it a better shoe. But now let's talk about a couple of cons. So two potential cons I could see folks having with the Hylite Circuit 2 Echo include number one, this is not going to be your best model for serious CrossFit and heavy lifting. This model is a good versatile training shoe, but as you get more niche with your performance, it's gonna fall short a little bit. So in regard to CrossFit, I think that this midsole is gonna break down wicked fast, especially if you're using your feet for rope climbs. And as a whole, like the midsole is okay for stability, but in the context of CrossFit and heavier lifting, I would actually say like cap your squats like 365 pounds in this model. And if you're pulling, you could probably get away with like four plates of so 405 pounds, but you're gonna be a little bit capped with how much stability this model provides and the durability of this midsole that's exposed down here. I'm not the biggest fan of, especially when it comes to things that can cause abrasion on that and potentially break down this foam. The second potential con I could see folks having with this shoe is that I kind of touched on this earlier in our first point, but I'm not a fan of this exposed midsole layer here on the lateral midfoot. I think that when training shoes implement this, you see breakdown a lot faster. Like for example, my Metcon 7s, they just had exposed midsole up here in the forefoot and I'm already having that rubber start to lip. So similarly, I would say probably pass on this model for any outdoor training, especially if you're doing any form of cutting or lateral work where this exposed midsole could have any exposure to asphalt or concrete that could start to rip this up. So my two cons for this model include number one, they're not going to be the best shoe for more niche training. So if you're into CrossFit or heavier lifting, this model will fall a tad short. And then my second con is that the exposed midsole on this lateral midfoot, I think could be a drawback, especially for folks who do want to use this shoe for training outdoors. When talking on the performance in the Hylite Circuit 2 Echo, I'm going to break the section to a few different parts. We'll talk about how the shoe performs with lifting, more versatile training, and then shorter runs and daily wear. Now when it comes to lifting, the shoe is okay. It will provide you with a nice moderate level of stability, but it's not going to be your best shoe for maxing out your squats, deadlifts, and cleans. So in this model, I would say probably cap your squats to about 365 pounds. The stability you get in this shoe comes from these thicker insoles that you can replace. And as you can see, like this is the four millimeter insole. We don't have a ton of stability. Like it is a nice versatile insole, but when it comes to like actual compression under different loads, this insole does fall a tad short. So that being said, if you're much more casual with your lifting, or if you want a shoe for moderate and lighter loads, this shoe will work really well. But again, it's not gonna be the best for stability. When it comes to versatile training, I really like this model. It breathes well, it's lightweight. I like the Vibram outsole. And as a whole, I think the midsole and insole when combined 
provide you with a nice responsive ride. And that's why I think the shoe does excel for things like HIIT workouts and classes because with those insoles that you can also switch out, you get a little bit of a variance in your heel to toe drop, which can then add to how this shoe performs based on your preferences and needs when you want something that's a bit more responsive and giving you a lot of ground feedback. So for versatile training and more athletic focus workouts, the Highly Circuit 2 Echo does a pretty good job. For shorter runs, this model will be okay. It's not gonna be my first pick for longer runs, but if you're tackling like that one to two, maybe casual three miles before or after your workouts, the shoe will be okay. You can also switch out the insoles and put in that eight millimeter insole. That'll give you a slightly more comfortable ride. But as a whole, again, with most cross training shoes, they're not gonna be the best for running, but for shorter runs, this model will do better than I think other cross training shoes on the market that are a bit more stable in nature. For daily wear, I like the silhouette of the shoe and how it looks, but here's the caveat and the kicker. With this exposed midsole layer here, I would say actually probably limit how much you're wearing these shoes out and about, especially if it is raining or there are elements of the weather that could break down the foam of this midsole. With this exposed midsole layer, we can run into issues with breakdown faster if you're wearing them on a daily basis. So if you wanna hedge your bets, I would say limit your wear in this shoe to mostly the gym or your classes, etc. And then if it's a nice day out, you can rock these and you shouldn't have too much of an issue with breakdown, but I'm always like, well, if it's gonna break down a little bit, like I would rather just not chance that. So with daily wear, you can certainly wear them, but I would say to prolong their durability, try to only wear them for your gym sessions and on very nice days. So now let's answer the question, who should invest in the Highly Circuit 2 Echo? I think if you are more casual with your training and you wanna shoe for classes, hit workouts, and some casual lifting here and there with lighter to moderate loads, this shoe will work really well. Plus, I think it looks pretty clean and aesthetic. Like it has a nice silhouette to it. I do think that it's a better model than the Hylite Circuit 2, but there are cons to each shoe, which is really interesting. But that being said, for my more casual folks out there who want a shoe that can perform okay in a variety of settings, this model works really well. Now, if you are into CrossFit or you're trying to train very heavy, this shoe will fall short and you may want to look into other cross training shoes. So when it comes to sizing and fit in the Highlight Circuit 2 Echo, you should be safe going true to size. This model's length fits true and this model has like a decently wide toe box. It's not like overly wide like a barefoot shoe, but it does have a slightly more anatomical build to it so it doesn't cut and taper in nearly as much as other cross training shoes. So that being said, if you have a neutral, even narrow, and maybe even slightly wider foot, you should be safe going true to size in the Highlight Circuit 2 Echo. For the Highlight Circuit 2 Echo, you can expect to pay $130 USD. This is similar to the Highlight Circuit 2. Personally, I like this model a bit better, so if you're on the fence between the Highlight shoes, I would say go Highlight Circuit 2 Echo if you have a choice, and if you're torn pretty much between each model, this I think is a superior shoe with the rework construction features that Highlight put into it. However, if you do wanna train outdoors, then you might wanna go Highlight Circuit 2 because we have a full rubber outsole, you'll have less breakdown issues, but as a whole, the price is pretty on point with other top cross training shoes on the market. Okay, so when talking on the weight, drop, and insole in the Highlight Circuit 2 Echo, for my size 10 model here, we have a weight of 10.35 ounces. That is a pretty light weight for a cross training shoe. And then we have a removable insole in this model. And once again, the insoles can be swapped out and about. So we have a four millimeter and an eight millimeter insole here. So the drop will vary based on the insole you prefer. All right, so four main differences between the Highlight Circuit 2 Echo and the Highlight Circuit 2 include number one, the boot construction. So over here on the Highlight Circuit 2, we have a much thicker boot, which I actually don't like for aesthetic purposes. And also just like, it just feels very awkward. In the Circuit 2 Echo, they brought this material down a little bit. So I do think that's a positive thing for this model. In the Highlight Circuit 2, we have a very thin and lightweight tongue that has these two cuts here. That can be problematic for durability. I actually had the tongue on one of my other models rip because I was like pulling on one side. So that being said, the tongue will be fine if you pull on both sides. Just be very conscious of the overall durability because with these cuts here, you can be a bit more prone to ripping this tongue. In the Highlight Circuit 2 Echo, the tongue is actually rounded, which I think is a nice move for durability. So you're gonna have much less potential to rip this tongue if you're pulling on one side. So I like that in the Highlight Circuit 2 Echo. When we look at the outsole constructions, both outsoles feature this Vibram construction and material, but 
Over here on the Circuit 2 Echo, we have more layers of exposed foam. So as you can see, we have some grooves up here in the forefoot, and we have an exposed layer here on the lateral midfoot. In the Circuit 2, we have a full rubber outsole. Both, I think, have their list of pros and cons, but when it comes to long-term durability, I think the Circuit 2 will actually have a better shot at durability with this outsole construction. The fourth difference is the insoles these shoes come with. So in the Circuit 2, you're getting three different insoles. You're getting zero millimeters, four millimeters, and eight millimeters. In the Circuit 2 Echo, they cut that down to just two insoles, so you get four millimeters and eight millimeters. So if you like having a zero millimeter drop and then also having a range, the Circuit 2 would be a better call for you. But as a whole, when it comes to the performance, both are pretty dang similar. And I don't think you could really go wrong with either or, but when it comes to like more niche construction aspects, I like the Circuit 2 Echo a tiny bit better. I think as a whole, the shoe's curation and construction seems a bit more strategic versus the Hylite Circuit 2. But again, they both perform very similar. All right, now let's quickly go over the construction of the Hylite Circuit 2 Echo. Up here on the toe, we have an extended outsole layer that wraps up. And then throughout the entirety of the upper, we have a breathable mesh. It's very lightweight, moves pretty well. And then we have six eyelets that run up, a seventh back here for lace locking, and a very lightweight and breathable thin tongue. Again, with tongues like this, we've seen this in Nike models too, just be conscious of how you're pulling this tongue up. Try to grab both sides and pull it up and adjust it. Don't do what I do and pull on one side and rip your tongue, please, because I have done that way too many times and I've learned that the hard way. Making our way back here to the boot, we have an extended heel tab back here, and then Hylite brought down the material thickness as a whole in this boot of the Hylite Circuit 2 Echo. I'm a big fan of that. Making our way to the midfoot, we have an EVA foam throughout, and then we have a Vibram outsole construction. So as opposed to the Circuit 2 that didn't have any layers of exposed foam, we do have five flex grooves up here in the forefoot, and then we also have an exposed layer here at the lateral midfoot, which I have talked about plenty of times in this video. Making our way to the insoles. So this model comes with two different insoles, four millimeters and eight millimeters. As a whole, like the insole is okay for stability once again, but as you can see, like we do get a bit of compression here and that's why it's like, you can feel this more so when like walking out heavier squats and when training a bit heavier. So once again, the insoles are four millimeters and eight millimeters in this model, but as a whole, that's pretty much the gist of this shoe's construction. If you have any other questions on this model's construction, hit me in the comments below. All right guys, that wraps up this review of the Hylite Circuit 2 Echo. If you have any questions on this model, hit me in the comments below and I will answer whatever you have or reach out to me personally, whichever you prefer. And as always guys, drop a like on the video, drop subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next one.